Hey everyone, Steven from futurelooks.com. Earlier this year, we had Jackie from BitPhoenix fly all the way from their Taiwanese headquarters to show our viewers just how to build the ultimate LAN party system in their BitPhoenix Prodigy chassis. He came by the FutureLooks studios and walked through the entire process step by step, giving us all the tips on how to do it. Let's have a look. Well, thank you so much, Jackie, for coming to the Future Look Studios in Canada. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Now, we've got uh, an interesting project today. We're actually going to build the ultimate LAN party system featuring the BitPhoenix Prodigy. How is that case been doing for you guys? Uh, ever since it's been launched, people are very excited about it. Uh, great price point, and there's a ton of features uh, for, for pretty much any system. As far as features go, what are the key features that make this case such a good LAN party chassis? First of all, you can actually still place a full-size power supply in here. And then there's also uh, enough space for tall heat sinks and even long graphics card uh, and tons of hard drive spaces. You can pretty much say that it's a no-compromise LAN party chassis in a mini, mini ITX There's chassis. no compromise, yes. Excellent. Well, I'm going to hold you to that for a second. I'm going to challenge you from with some hardware that I've actually selected to see if we can prove that non-compromise uh, claim. I've uh, started out by picking out the Z77 Stinger. Uh, this is a board from EVGA that uses the Z77 chipset. has a 7 plus 1 phase PWM, so you can actually overclock it a little bit. Uh, it also has a full size PCI 3.0 slot for your graphics cards. Uses an Intel NIC on the back here, one gigabit per second NIC, so there's no compromise for the gaming uh, for your LAN parties. And it fits, uh, we've got already installed here a 3770K. Uh, do you think this this particular motherboard will work perfectly with this, with this chassis? That's a great selection for the motherboard on this case. Awesome. Now, do you think we could actually install this here, uh, this is the NHD14 uh, Noctua. This is the cooler of choice for many overclockers. It's also bigger than my head. Do you think this will fit inside the Prodigy? Uh, fitting inside the Prodigy is not an issue, but luckily you pick, you picked this EVGA board and it'll definitely fit on this, uh, this motherboard. Well, it's kind of funny because this is actually bigger than the board. <laughs> you see uh, that? Yeah, once you add the fans to it, it is actually a little bit bigger but it won't interfere with the PCI lanes unlike some, uh, some uh, motherboards as uh, the socket is actually placed way too close to the PCI uh, lane. So uh, this specific motherboard actually has the, uh, the socket placed away from the PCI lane so larger heat sinks can actually be placed on top without interfering with anything else. Well, I look forward to seeing that. Now, I have one more thing that's actually kind of uh, interesting. Now, you mentioned uh, no compromise support for uh, hardware. How about the top end NVIDIA GTX 690? Do you think this will fit in this system as well? As long as there's a PCI lane on the motherboard, it should fit fine with the hard drive cages removed from the case. So something like this here, which is absolutely ridiculous, like you're saying that this will fit inside. Anything bigger than the motherboard will still fit in the case. Okay. <laughs> now, if you're, I, I believe that in this chassis, you actually have to pull out the hard drive base to make it work with this card, right? That's correct. Just take out the side panels here. So in order to place larger graphics card, we'll just remove this hard drive cage. Now you've got space for three and a half inch drives. Do you still have room for uh, SSDs like this? Yeah, on this side panel, um, the rear, uh, where the USB ports are, there's actually two extra SSD mounts. Uh, there's one on the PSU wall. Uh, if you remove this hard drive cage as well, you actually get an additional one. And on the floor, there is actually another SSD mount. So essentially, if you remove every single hard drive cage, you can place five SSDs in here without a hitch. Wow, so if you just ditch, your, ditch all support for three and a half inch devices, you can actually run a full gamut of SSDs inside. That's correct. That would actually make your LAN party chassis even lighter. Even faster. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, let's start building it up and see what we can do with it. Now, we've also picked out a um, pair of memory modules from Kingston. Now, these are the tall uh, heat spreader types. So we're going to try to fit those in here as well if we can. Let's try it. And we also have a uh, power supply from the N brand. I picked it because it's white because we want it to match up the colors. So uh, let's see what we can do with this. 
All right, Jackie, so I've got the mounting mechanism for the NHD14 already fitted on here. Do you recommend installing the memory first? Because of the placement and everything's so small, uh, let's put the memory on first and, okay. see, and then see if the heatsink will actually uh, fit on it. Sounds good. Let's go ahead and do that. So we've got their, our Predator modules here. These have a moderately tall heatsink. They're not the tallest on the market, I don't think, by far, but they, they are pretty tall. They look pretty nice, too. Yeah, they do. The nice black and the and blue and the X on the side definitely looks nice. Now let's hope we can keep this on here. So I've got the NHD14 and of course, you know, with any installation, heatsink installation, we do have to put a little bit of heatsink paste. I like to put a uh, speck the size of a uh, grain of rice right smack dab in the middle. I don't do the spreading thing, although it's up to you whether you uh, want to or not. Uh, I think less is better in this case. And we'll just install that onto our uh, board here. Now this is using the Secure Firm 2, which is actually one of my favorite ways of mounting a heatsink. It's such a good mounting mechanism. And down it goes in. Uh-oh. It looks like we've run into our first issue here. It looks like the, uh, the tall spreaders, you can see here, they're just not going to work for us. So what do we do? Uh, I guess we'll switch it out for an even shorter RAM. Okay, perfect. So let's uh, bring out some uh, backup RAM. And luckily, we brought over some uh, Kingston HyperX Genesis modules, which are actually half height. So we'll show you right here. These are the uh, Predator. And you can see how short they are. I do, uh, do recall that there's also some even lower profile memory modules that have just hit the market from uh, Samsung. And, and Samsung, and right? Samsung. So we can definitely look at those options as well. But these are pretty standard. Uh, this is an eight gigabyte kit, 1600 megahertz, pretty standard. Uh, the board itself, the EVJ Stinger, will actually support memory up to 2133 megahertz at 1.65 volts is what they recommend. So you can definitely do that. Uh, this is an eight gigabyte kit, of course, but you can go up to 16 in some of the uh, higher densities. There you go. So let's see if this will work now. Oh, look at that. Perfect. So there we go. Uh, we've got good clearance here. It definitely looks like it's going to uh, work out. While we're talking about motherboards and mounting them, uh, there are actually a, a few other boards that work really well for this case, including the uh, Asus um, P... P P8Z77-I Deluxe. And I believe they're adding uh, WD to the, to the name for, for Witty. Okay. Uh, that one also has a similar socket placement with the EVJ Stinger here. And they cost pretty much similar, if I recall. This one, I believe, is $199. The Asus is definitely the top dog, uh, I believe, because they have such an amazing uh, voltage regulation system on board. Really good granularity, as our friend JJ would say. Uh, and probably one of the best overclockers. This one's not too bad either. Um, EVJ did some really good work in uh, making it compact. It doesn't have that riser card on the side, so you get a little more clearance. Um, 7 plus 1 phase PWM, so you do get a little bit of uh, adjustment room for that. Now I know this heatsink's been on the market for a while now, but every time I look at it, I can't believe how big it is. And it's still one of the best performers on the market, isn't it? That's correct. Six massive heat pipes, and it's, man, it's like literally the size of the motherboard right now. For the uh, BitPhoenix Prodigy, do you recommend, like is there any compromise in terms of uh, pulling out fans or doing anything? Like you can still mount this inside the chassis without removing anything, right? Uh, if you have a fan, on the Noctua on the I.O. side, you would actually have to remove the, the, the installed fan on the Prodigy. Uh, but as of right now, I think we should be able to keep the back fan in and have the stock fans uh, on, installed on the, on the Noctua. Okay, well let's uh, throw the 14mm uh, fan back in the middle here and let's see what we can do with it in term, and uh, see what we can, if we can really install this. So we've removed the side panel. Uh, recommended that you remove the hard drive cages as well. So for a little more clearance, right? Yep. Okay. And there looks to be some issues with the optical drive. Okay. But let's just see if it goes in right. Sure. Let's give it a whirl. I'll uh, pull this bundle of wires through for you first. So as you can see here, there's actually uh, compatibility issues with the optical drive okay. and the fan. Uh, if you remove the fan, it'll fit. But since we're going to actually use the fan here, Let's just remove the optical drive since uh, we're not going to use one. And since no one uses one anyway, let's go ahead and do that. Now, we're, while we're at the front of the uh, case here, 
when you remove the optical bay, you actually get the option to install either two 120 millimeter fans. That's correct. Or you can do one huge 230 millimeter fan, right? 230 millimeter fan will work as well. Uh, okay. We do have our Spectre Pro lineup or the Spectre if you want silent. Uh, they move uh, quite a lot of air for its size. Uh, people use it for uh, either, either with those large 180 millimeter rads or just a ton of airflow. So there's the optical bay, and as you can see, once you remove this, you're no longer putting in the top set of uh, drive bays, right? That's correct, and unfortunately, you also can't use uh, fan controllers as well. But as the EVGA actually has a lot of fan connectors on their uh, on their motherboard, there's actually no need for... Yeah, I can see that. Like, there's actually two here, one for the CPU, and one on the very back, as you can see down here somewhere. Uh, so that's quite unique. I did a good. I, I picked a good board, didn't I? That's very good. Okay, well let's slide it in and see how it looks. So it did take a bit of care, but once we got it in here, it looks like everything fits okay. That's correct. Yeah, and I guess all we need to do is just um, put the uh, motherboard screws in. Put the in. motherboard screws in. Perfect. Now, is there any other special hardware that the uh, BitPhoenix comes with that people should know about? It comes with a manual if you ever get stuck. Okay, well the manual manual is definitely good, but this video is definitely better, right? <laughs> now with some of the clearance here that I'm noticing, you almost need a hex wrench to get in there with some of these angles back here. Probably not an issue if you're running a water cooling system because there's not this huge heat sink in the way. Mm. Now speaking of water cooling, what kind of water cooling options would someone have if they weren't running an NHD14? Well, especially if you remove the front panel here, you could actually place a 240 millimeter rad or, or one of those large 180 millimeter rad radiators from Phobia. Uh, up top, you also have uh, uh, lots of space for another thick 240 millimeter radiator. Your pumps or reservoirs on the bottom, okay. if, if you feel like it. And because it doesn't matter if you remove all your drive bays, because you can still mount SSDs. Lots of SSDs. It, it's nice and clean anyway, right? So now we're going to take advantage of those uh, fan headers here, I guess. Now there's um, two case fans that come in the box, right? That's correct. You got one in the front and you got one in the rear. Okay, now these aren't LED lit ones, but you were mentioning that the Spectre Pro, uh, is that an LED fan? Uh, Spectre Pros come in both LED or non-LED, same with the regular Spectres. Okay, um, do you need to uh, run them with a special fan controller at all to be able to control the LED or can you just control it the way it is? Uh, there is actually a two pin connector uh, that you don't plug into your motherboard connector or it'll, it'll, it'll short circuit. But once you remove those two pins, uh, the fan LED will actually turn off. Uh, but if you leave them back in, they'll be controlled by the fan speed. Okay. So uh, if, if you want to individually turn them off though, we have the Hydro Pro fan controller, which you will need to utilize the front optical bay. So you would, wouldn't be able to run the NHD14 anymore, but you could run a water cooling kit, a 120, like a Corsair H100 or something like that. Yes. Or even a, a Nantec 920. Or Especially like with a 30 watt per channel, you, you can pretty much run any, any okay. pump on there. And that would be advised, obviously, if you wanted to run all the fans in the system, because if, if you only have like two or three headers on the motherboard, you're going to run out of headers pretty quickly, right? That's correct. And you'll have to use splitters and get all messy. That's right. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to plug in the CPU fan and the rear fan. Now one thing that we should probably point out to you is that before you uh, push your system in and lock it down with motherboard screws, you should probably plug this last this header in to the motherboard before you do that. What we noticed is that when we put the motherboard um, all the way in with the heatsink installed, we no longer have access to that. So we're going to actually remove the motherboard again uh, and plug this in before we install it. But that's part of building a system. You, um, you experiment, you find the best way to do things, and hopefully from our video, you can pre-plan in advance and have an even better experience than we have. Right, now that we've got our fans installed onto the motherboard with the headers, we've got the NHD14 mounted to the Z77 Stinger EVGA motherboard and the RAM, 
uh, we found some low profile modules. So as we found out with this particular heat sink, you can't run the uh, regular uh, tall spreaders. But if we did have a smaller uh, tower style cooler, we could probably get away with it, right? That's right. So you know, we've, we've done what we could with what we have here. And again, that's kind of the nice thing about building your PCs. You can build it pretty much any way you want. I guess the next step here is to plug in our choice of SSDs because we've basically lost uh, all of our, um, well, we, we haven't lost, we have space for two, three and a half uh, inch drives here still, but we can also mount two and a half inch drives pretty much in five different places, right? That's correct. Uh, you have two mounts on the side panel here. Uh, if you decide to remove the hard drive cage here, you got two on the wall, you got one on the floor, so there's tons of space. And even, even if you decide to keep these in, you got 2.5 mounts on these hard drive sleds. But of course, for cable management and everything, you might want to just pull out these drive bays just to shove all your cables underneath and possibly even cover it up, right? You can even zip tie them down. Fantastic. Now, I really like the way that this door works. I really like the fact that you do have this option to store your SSDs on the back side that's pretty much unreachable, right? So if you remove the thumb screws and you bolt them on for security, you can actually mount two more of these. You can mount the two drives back here so you can have your storage drive, uh, you have your main drive, uh, with your SATA. And it, it looks like it, you didn't even have it there. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's not even there. And you can even mount, uh, if you only have one single SSD, like a lot of people do still, you can mount another two and a half inch drive that's much bigger so you can get both storage and speed, right? For example, uh, the Seagate Momentus, uh, you, you can get 750 gigs on it and have tons of storage. Awesome. So let's go ahead and uh, pick a spot. Where do you recommend would be best for us? Uh, we can try the hard drive cage or uh, on, on the PSU wall or, or on, the, on the side panels if you want. Well, I guess we're building the ultimate LAN party chassis, aren't we? Uh, ultimate LAN party system, So right? I guess to be more secure, we will just put them onto the side panel. Sounds good, let's bolt these down. Since we have the uh, side panel off here and uh, since Jackie's still working on getting the bottom drive tray out so that we have a little bit more space here to work with, um, one thing that I noticed is that on the side here, you've got all of your I.O. ports here. I mean, you've got two USB 3.0, uh, no USB 2 because obviously it's a small case. You want to keep it backwards compatible as well. So that's no problem. Uh, you got your reset right there and you've also got your power. So at a LAN party, I would probably cover these up with tape though, right? Because someone's going to poke at them, right? And you can Maybe. disable your power options and have the button not do anything when you press it. That is true as well too. So there you go. So a couple ways to secure not only your SSDs, but also your buttons as well too. Uh, so what are we working on now? Uh, let's try and get the power supply and plug everything back in. Okay, sounds good. Let's do that. So this case uses a, um, a different type of mounting mechanism, doesn't it? Like there's a plate there. Yes, this is a power supply bracket. And I guess you would just place it on here screw your power supply into these brackets and then slide your power supply back in. Okay, now you would obviously be doing that after you have everything assembled because there's a, there's not a lot of room in there. Like you have to have a power supply that's within a certain um, size range, right? That's correct. Uh, unfortunately, I think this power supply is 180 millimeters and this power supply cage is 180 millimeters. So oh. you, I think we should be looking at a smaller power supply, probably 160 or less. Okay, well, you know what? I happen to have one here that's 160. Uh, I was hoping that the white color of the Zen brand uh, <laughs> power supply would actually work with it, but I guess we can't have everything. So we have another N brand power supply that is smaller. And as you can see, even though they look the same, there is a fair difference in size, almost a whole inch here. So that makes a big difference, doesn't it, Jackie? That is true. Okay, let's give this a whirl. Okay, so what's the best way of uh, approaching the uh, insertion of the power supply? The best way to put the power supply in would actually to route all your cables in through first, uh, plug your necessary, uh, I don't know, additional peripherals uh, into the power supply and also route them as well. Okay. And then, once you plug everything, grab the cables to one side and just push it. Okay, now as far as power supply cables go, now these are using the rounded braided ones. Uh, would you recommend the round, rounded braided ones over the flat style ones? Is one better than the other for this chassis? The flat ones are more flexible, okay. so definitely the, uh, the flat ones are better. Okay. Uh, but also keep in mind, uh, for this case, I would actually recommend non-modular power supplies because 
they're, they're all, all the cables are all to one side and, okay. and they, they all route to the left side of the case. Right. Uh, but once you get into modular cables, you have, you have uh, connectors here, which will actually interfere with the wall of the case. Okay. And that might have some issues. All right. So I guess pre-planning is in order. So I, what we should probably do is take, quickly take stock of what we got here. We're going to need two SATA ports because okay. we've got two SSDs here. We're going to need an 8 plus 6 pin uh, for the GPU, whichever one we choose. And we're also going to need, and I believe that's, that's really it. So we've got the 24 pin for the motherboard already. Uh, we've got the 8 pin for the uh, motherboard AT, uh, ATX 12 volt power. And we've got a 6 pin and a four and an 8 pin right here. So we're good to go there. We just need uh, SATA. We just need SATA connectors. Excellent. So as Jackie was mentioning earlier, uh, it's probably a good idea to not only pre-plan what plugs that you need for your power supply, in this case it's a modular power supply, and Jackie does recommend the non-modular ones, but he also recommends that we should also plug everything in before we shove the power supply in. Uh, because you don't have a lot of room to work in here, but by having the power supply away from the chassis itself, you actually have a lot more flexibility as to where you plug things in. And there are a lot of places where you can route cables. I mean, there's fittings here, there's two in the back here as well too. There's a couple more in the back. So it's not like you're, it's super tiny inside where you can't really do anything. It's just recommended that to have this extra hand room here, you leave the power supply out for now until you get everything where it needs to be. All right, so uh, Jackie has just finished uh, doing a bit of cable management here. I'm just gonna quickly go around here. Uh, Jackie, uh, is there a reason why you picked this area for cable management? Uh, it's directly right beside the power supply. And because you have a solid side panel here, you're not gonna be able to see any of the cables anyways. Okay. So you don't need to zip tie them down or just stuff them all into this compartment. There you have it. And it also keeps this area clean here in case you wanted to mount nothing and then it looks pretty clean down here or even the reservoir, right? There's also no airflow restrictions because mm. there's nothing there. Perfect. Okay, next step uh, we're going to tackle is getting these SATA cables in through the case and to the back and getting power to them. Alright, so we've got our SATA cables through, we've got our power cables through. We actually have three here, but we only need two. But just in case we did have a third SSD down at the bottom here, we've got the ability to plug that in. So let's throw on the side panel and get the, uh, I think we need to get the front I.O. here. We got the audio, we got the USB 3.0 header. Um, power reset switches. Power reset switches. It looks like everything's going to fit, so let's get, get that going. Okay, so we've managed to get all the SATA um, SATA connectors on here in the SATA power and data uh, to the SSDs. You want to close up the panel here and as you can see the, the cable management looks like it's working out pretty good. Obviously there's room for improvement here but just for the sake of brevity we're just going to close it up here so that Jackie can work on getting all the other cables uh, put together. Okay so Jackie's quickly and uh, fairly efficiently uh, cleaned up the cables over here. Now one thing about the Stinger board is that we did notice that there's no audio header on the motherboard. Uh, we were actually kind of uh, perplexed for a second, but apparently... Um, I, I guess they're saying that the rear audio it. is good enough because it's well, so close. Well, rear audio is obviously better because it's connected directly to the, uh, the, to the car itself. And sometimes when you have a small chassis, because you're routing that cable around power components and everything, it can compromise audio quality. Not in this particular chassis because you have plenty of room, but in this case, uh, if you were to build a really super tiny uh, chassis and you run it, run it somewhere where it wouldn't, wouldn't normally be, uh, you might pick up some audio noise. So, so EVJ did think about you know space on the motherboard yeah. and what's important and what's not important. I do understand that, but at the same time, I still would have rather have had the option to do so. But hey, you know, TH is home, and it, it does look like a fantastic board otherwise. Uh, so now that we've got the cables routed and everything like that, we are left with one final challenge for you. And you said that this was a no compromise LAN party rig, right? That's correct. That means that we're going to have to have one badass video card stuck in there. And I believe that the only badass card on the market right now uh, at $1,000 is this GeForce GTX 690. Do you think it'll take it? No problem. Okay, let's throw that in there. Can I have the honors of putting this in? Be my guest. All right, it's fantastic. So. Although I'm technically your guest on this show. Okay, well, um, <laughs> maybe I should let you do it. So we got the card to fit in there. As you can see, there's plenty of room right here. 
Like no no problem fitting one of the largest, most powerful graphics cards on the market. They the should system. make it they should make it longer. <laughs> they should make it longer just to prove a point. And all we need to do is plug in the power here. Um, really nice cable management, it looks like. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any issues getting all the cables up here. Uh, obviously there's room for improvement for cable management because you can just throw a few zip, zip ties and everything like that. Uh, would you recommend using uh, extended sleeve cables at all? Uh, extended sleeve cables will take up a little bit more room, but it also does make it the case and the cables inside look a lot nicer, especially if you're going to be modding the case to have a window on it. Okay, that looks really sweet. Looks like there's no cables in there at all. Yeah, it looks like it's completely stealth hidden everywhere. That's awesome. Now you guys also have some new colors coming out too, right? Uh, they're actually already out. Uh, we got fire red and atomic orange. Now as far as um, the fans and everything go, uh, I think that this might need some LED fans. Uh, what would you recommend? Again, the, um, the Spectre seemed like a very good choice. Luckily, we've got a couple of LED fans here. We've got... Oh, you've got green and red, like just in time for Christmas. <laughs> so if we did a uh, Christmas mod here, we could throw these in here. In the front, do two of these, and that would be one pretty sweet looking chassis, huh? It's Christmas season, and if you want to make it snow colored, and you know, we got, <laughs> we got white. We wanted to build a no compromise system with some really high end parts. We started off with the Z77 Stingers EVJ motherboard. We had an NHD14 uh, chat, um, sorry, cooler, and that fit in there. We had some memory um, clearance issues, but that was alleviated with some lower profile memory modules that we had kicking around in our bin. But if you were to choose a different cooler, uh, another tower cooler of some sorts, we probably wouldn't have had that issue, right? Or if you wanted to use a liquid cooler, uh, all-in-one liquid cooler, uh, that would also have no issues with the RAM. And there are also a lot of options too. You can run a 100 and, uh, 20 millimeter uh, rear radiator version of one of the newer 140s. Uh, you can do a dual 28, uh, dual 240, uh, 240 uh, 120 uh, on the top, like the H100 uh, and its replacement successor as well too. Or you can go completely custom, like you were saying that you can put a 240 in the front uh, or some other custom it's Custom wraps. radiators that all fit in the front. There's our ultimate LAN party rig. I can't wait to fire this up at our next LAN party. This is fantastic. We got no compromise graphics. We got 3770K that we're probably gonna overclock in there. Uh, and uh, it's looking pretty sweet, Jackie. It might be even better than my system. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming by, Jackie. Thank you. We'd like to thank Jackie again for making that huge trip from Taiwan all the way to our Canadian studios to show our viewers just how to get the most out of their BitPhoenix Prodigy chassis and for helping us construct the ultimate LAN party system. I'm Steven with Future Looks. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like our videos. Take care, everyone.